In this video, I will show you how you can significantly improve the value of your software patent with a simple trick. If you're new here, the software patent review is the place where we look at freshly granted European patents to find out what's actually patentable in the software space and also to spot common mistakes everybody makes, but which you can avoid if you watch this video to the end. Before we dive in, let me thank the sponsor of today's video. I'm just kidding. I'm an independent European patent attorney and I don't have any sponsors. So if you want to support what I'm doing here, please just spread the word, maybe send this video to a colleague who needs to see this, or maybe even share it on LinkedIn. That would help a lot. Thanks. Okay, let's look at today's patent. So today's patent is owned by the electronics company LG. The patent was filed at the end of 2017 and granted recently. So roughly four years of patent prosecution, which is pretty average, I would say. The title of the patent is mobile robot and control method thereof. So maybe let's take a look into the introduction to see what it's all about. So the introduction really starts by talking about uh, robots in general. So for um, industrial or medical applications, for example, but it then kind of narrows down into um, household robots, like a cleaning robot. Robot, really. And it explains that these kinds of cleaning robots typically have a, a couple of sensors, like infrared sensors or ultrasonic sensors to detect obstacles in their way. So the object of the invention is really to provide a moving robot which um, is able to determine an attribute of an obstacle and therefore in the end to recognize the obstacle and to perform avoidance driving at a high confidence. let's have a brief look at the figures. So here we can see a typical cleaning robot. There's also some AI involved. But of course, as you will know, if you've watched some of my videos, the scope of uh, protection afforded by the patent is not defined by the figures, not in the description, but really in the patent claims. So let's look at the claims now. So the independent claim one is directed to a moving robot. So this is a product claim really covering the physical thing the robot and its components. Then we have a couple of dependent claims uh, for the moving robot defining fallback positions. And also we have claim 13, a control method of a moving robot. So this is uh, a complementary method claim, which then focuses on uh, the dynamic behavior of the robot. Maybe let's look at the method claim first, because that's oftentimes uh, more illustrative to get the idea behind the patent in digital inventions, which uh, mainly focus on the dynamics of a product. So the method comprises a first step of capturing a plurality of continuous images by an image acquisition unit. So there seems to be some kind of camera installed in the robot. Then we have a step of detecting by a sensor unit. That's a separate sensor than the camera an obstacle while a body of the mo moving robot moves. Okay, so now the obstacle is um, detected by means of some kind of sensor. And then the method goes on with selecting an image captured at a particular point in time before the obstacle is detected by the sensor unit. And once the obstacle is detected, it goes on with recognizing an attribute of the obstacle based on an image acquired by an image acquisition unit. When the recognized attribute of the obstacle indicates that it's a, a movable obstacle, um, the method requires outputting a preset sound and controlling driving of a travel unit based on the recognized attribute. Okay, what does that all mean? Basically, it boils down to the fact that the robot, when it's moving, um, captures its environment with some kind of sensor. And it has also a camera which acquires a continuous series of pictures. Once an obstacle is detected with the sensor, um, the robot can use the pictures it took to detect whether the obstacle is a movable uh, obstacle. And if that's the case, the robot um, plays a sound and also adapts its driving pathway. Now for comparison, let's look at claim one, maybe the product claim. And here it's interesting to see that um, because in claim one, we have the two part form, the characterizing feature of the claim, meaning that feature, which in the end uh, convinced the patent examiner to grant the patent 
is really that an image is selected at a particular point in time before the obstacle is detected by the sensor unit. So that really seems to be that feature which in the end convinced the patent examiner. What does it mean? Well, let's take a look into the description again, um, because the ultrasonic sensor has a relatively short range. And the problem is that once the ultrasonic sensor has detected the obstacle, um, the robot may be uh, so close already to the obstacle that uh, the obstacle is hard to recognize in uh, the video picture. And therefore, the core of the invention is really in that the actual detection of the obstacle is done based on an image captured at a particular point in time before the obstacle uh, has been detected by the ultrasonic sensor. So we can see an example in uh, figure 30, where we see that um, the robot is already very close to the obstacle. And uh, maybe then one of the pictures taken by the camera in this fashion would have been better for the object recognition. Now, what is the actual key takeaway from this patent? Let's take a look at the claim again, because there is one thing that could have been done better. So the original idea was really just to um, play a preset sound when uh, the recognized obstacle is a movable obstacle. And there are some funny examples in uh, the figures. But obviously, uh, this idea of playing a preset sound uh, did not convince the patent examiner to grant a patent. So the applicant added another feature, namely the idea of um, doing the image recognition really on a um, video picture taken at a point in time before the object is detected by the sensor unit. And now as a result, what we have in the claim are really those two features which don't have that much to do with each other. And importantly, the scope of protection of a patent claim is really the intersection of all its features. So the claim is only infringed if each and every element is really fulfilled by the infringer. So an easy way around this claim would probably be to just sell a robot that doesn't make a sound. And then you could still use this beneficial way of image recognition, but you would not literally infringe the claim. Okay, so what's the key lesson from this patent? Always clean up your patent claim before grant. Meaning that once the examiner acknowledges that uh, now the, the patent is ready for grant, go through the patent claims again and ask for every feature in the claim whether this is really necessary to bring the invention over the patentability hurdle. Because every element in the claim which does not contribute to the patentability of uh, the claim is really just a burden because it reduces the scope of protection without additional benefits. Okay, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and help me spread the word and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.